Welcome back, fishing friends, to the worldwide headquarters of Pinhook Fishing Club. All right, guys, a different kind of a video for you today. It's that time where I need to get some blade sharpened. Now, when I'm out and about fishing and camping, I'll use one of these little quick ones to get it done. It's got the coarse side and then the the fine side. But if I'm at home, I like to use this leather strop. I put some uh, compound on. And then usually what I do is I'm going to use the little mini condor mini bush lure here. This one's my little neck knife. And so when I do the sharpening, I try to find the, the bevel or what I call the edge. And I just very carefully and I, I, I push it away from me. Find that slope, I start with the tip, and then just slide it over, <clears throat> excuse me, and I do that over and over. Try to do like 10 on each side, and if I do get uh, some of the compound on the blade, it's, it's easy for it to come off. So the key thing is to find that edge. And then if you want to do focus more on the tip, then focus more on the tip. And if you want to get down towards the base, then towards the base. This strop right here, it's a little soft on the edge. It's on a, on a block. And I like having it like that. That way I can really kind of push down when I need to get to that bottom side. Am I a pro at this? No. I probably have a little bit too much compound on there, but that's okay. That'll always come off. So I always talk about my bushcraft buddies, and those are guys that are always out there, primitive skills, learning how to survive out on the land. They camp out there for extended periods of time. And they, uh, so you can see some of the compound on there. So I'll wipe that off. I could do it right here on the edge of the card table, or I've got like a little cloth I use. Let's find the edge, we're going to go back this way. So I talk about my bushcraft buddies, well, they're always out there camping and doing all these different things with preparing firewood, building shelters, if they don't have like a hammock or something they're staying in. And so they're, they're always working on skills like this. Now, I'm not a bush crafter, <laughs> but I kind of like that lifestyle. To follow it and kind of pay attention to it. Now, I mean, I go camping and things like that, and of course I'm always fishing, but I'm never in a position where I would be out there to really have to survive and they give me a hard time for that <laughs> they always tell me I need to work on my bushcraft skills and I got a few of them right now I've got some that are up at a rendezvous which is a group of guys that go for a big camp out and they have a lot of fun doing that but uh, it's just I like collecting some of these knives and having them around especially when I'm fishing. Right, you can see some of that compound coming off. And some people will go just straight down and then straight back. Straight down and straight back. It just depends on the blade that you're using and how you want to sharpen that. So for me, I like to do like a roundabout sometimes and so like I was saying we're not a pro at this and there is a lot of compound down there but that comes off pretty easily yep she's nice and sharp okay now do you have to use the compound no so I've got a buddy of mine that one of the bushcraft buddies he just uses his leather belt straps it to the tree and that's it 
This is just a little felt cloth here. Yeah, I'm being careful with this. All right, so the neck knife is nice and sharp. It's got that nice edge. Maybe just a little bit more on this side. Oops. There we go. Check this out. There we go. Okay, so this one's ready. <clears throat> you can see this one's from El Salvador. It's got a nice little sheath. I made the lanyard for it. This one's my neck knife. Okay, up next, what if you got a little teeny one? Like this little classic uh, Victorian Arcs. Victorinox Swiss Army Knife. I use this one all the time to open letters and things. Same thing. Find that edge. And this one's stainless steel. So it's not like that fine carbon steel which will leave some material behind but this will get this nice and sharp too yeah don't know don't uh, overlook the little classic guys this thing is awesome little Swiss Army knife now I would, would sharpen the one that I've got in the truck but I already did it the Victorinox Ranger Grip. Let's see. This guy's got a little file. Where's the other one? Oh, the scissors on that one. Okay. Then I've got a little bit bigger one, and this one. This one's got a lot of use as well. Oops, I think I hit the camera there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> and it doesn't take very much. You don't need to go forever. You'll know. You can tell whether you go five and five. little too much compound there but that's fine now Victorinox has these stainless steel blades and they're pretty much indestructible I mean they are phenomenal and there's nothing wrong with using the stainless steel in some instances I prefer it this one's going to be a little trickier. This is the short, the little short blade. And so the good thing about this strop is it'll take out the little burrs and the nicks that you get in there. It's almost like you could make an ASMR video <laughs> on knife sharpening. Okay, so the stainless steel. Now, most of my, most of us use the stainless steel when we're out there doing different things. Those are the only two blades that are really worn down. Corkscrew, I don't need to sharpen any of that. Any of these other blades. 
these are in good shape but a lot of times these are overlooked the, the Victorinoxes man they just have so many different styles you're gonna find one that'll that's gonna work for you okay now this is a big heavy knife from uh, this is a Kephart design from the Pathfinder Knife Shop Dave Canterbury's crew Self-Reliance Outfitters this is a carbon steel blade and so with this I treat the blade with a blade oil and I've done videos on that before this is walnut scales on here full tang it's a big big heavy knife it's got a great grip made the lanyard for this one now the thing is this is carbon steel but it also works with a the best with a ferro rod to, to get those sparks if you're going to do um, camping you need to get a, a fire going big shout out to my younger brother who drilled the holes in here into this red stag uh, antler and then I dropped the steel in there I like these Scandi grinds, the Scandinavian grind, but you got to find that edge and then bring it across. So this one's got a, <clears throat> a lot of wear on the tip. I used to use this one quite a bit when I first got it for fishing. This is my sole blade that I take out there with me fishing, this bushcraft knife. And the reason I have these knives with me is because there's sometimes where I'm cutting up some sunfish to use for catfish bait. And also just for other things for line maintenance and stuff like that. I use braid as you guys know and this will just cut the braid nice and easy you see I picked up some compound on there it's not a big deal to get the compound on there you just don't want to leave it there This one's definitely got some chinks in the old armor. <clears throat> Just some little burrs, some little bumps in there. Because when I was camping, and I used this one this summer when I was camping to help split wood. I'm not a big fan of batoning with the knives. A lot of people do that. They're like, they want to show that they can baton with them and how good they are batoning. But I use this to make the curls so that I can get a kindling curl so I can get a fire started. But I've used this big knife here even to clean fish, catfish, northern pike, and crappie. You think a big heavy blade like this would be too much, but uh, it works fine. So if you're ever sharpening knives, just figure, you know, find that edge, and then you come up with your, you know, your own style, what works for you. I'm sure people are like, what is this guy doing? He's crazy. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. I've just done it so many times, and it just works out well for me doing it this way.
little bit more to clean up on there, but I can take care of that later. All right. Nice and sharp. And this is the Kepart style for the bushcraft knife. It's a traditional style. It's got the little guard right there, a good firm handle. Nice heavy blade. So if you're into collecting knives, got to get a Kepart traditional one. And there's more I need to add to my collection, like the uh, I mean, it comes with a nice sheath here. And there's more knives I'm going to add to my collection. It'll just it's going to take some time for me to do that a lot. You know, life gets busy, but there's some Moras I want to collect. Mora Spark, Mora Companion, Mora Garberg. Some say those are the gold standards for for knives. I prefer the Victorinox type blades. But uh, and this this one right here was from the Pathfinder knife shop. Uh, I want to say 130, and I ordered the sheath, so a little bit more. I got this a few years ago, but man, it it's just nice and smooth. Okay, the newest one I picked up <clears throat> was when I was in Spain. I picked up this Muela, Muela Pointer. It's about nine inches. So this one is absolutely pristine. A little bit of wear and tear on it from this summer. So I used it in Iowa quite a bit. It's made from it's made in Toledo, Spain. But same thing with this one. Find that nice edge. And just work it. What drives me nuts is the guy had a sticker on the blade. Right up here and it's it's sticky. And I've tried to get that off of there. And it's just going to be wear and tear will do it. Usage is going to be the best way. I don't want to put a lot of chemical on there. But just right here, look at that blade, it's just phenomenal. The Spanish are well known for their steel and their weapons, swords, knives, etc., daggers, because they've done it for so many, so many years. Think of the knights during the Middle Ages. I mean, these guys just perfected making weapons. And so I found this one in a little shop in Toledo, Spain. And, you know, tourists go in and out of that shop all the time. And a friend of mine who's a, a collector has found some heirlooms in there, some swords that are from the 13, 1400s that people have sold to the guy. To her. They found them in uh, estate sales. Well, my friend who's a historian has found some real gems in there. This time in the in the store they didn't have any gems like that, but I saw this one, and of course the guy you know is thinking ah these are tourists they're just going to be looking, but he knew exactly what I was doing because I went straight to the wall, and they had four or five different uh, wellas up there, and uh, different sizes, and I saw this one I was like yep this has got bushcraft written all over, bushcraft Spain is, and all through Europe bushcraft is picking up. It's just the ability to use your skills, live off the land like they used to do. And during COVID, a lot of these preppers and guys that are bushcrafters, they live just fine. No power in some areas, no electricity. They could handle it. Like when we had the snowmageddon down here in Texas. But uh, during COVID, during the lockdown, where people couldn't go out and go anywhere, a lot of the preppers were just laughing at the rest of us because we were all dependent on so much stuff that we, we couldn't handle like people freaking out about toilet paper but anyway I could go on and on but the life of a bushcrafter is taking care of their blades and there's lots of guys out there that you can watch uh, videos on you've got Dave Canterbury you got Corporal's Corner Sean Kelly you got Adaptable Survival there's all these different ones, and you can kind of see what the lifestyle is all about. I like that kind of a lifestyle. I'll never live it, but there's some parts of it I like. 
like the knives and learning how to tie the different knots, some of the survival skills. One thing I did pick up from them is a carrier survival kit now when I'm out fishing. That's a big deal. I never used to do that. And I'm like, ah, you know, it's never going to come up, but it, it can. So a couple times I've had to get the the first aid kit for family members and for friends that, you know, have either gotten scuffed up, uh, fallen down or whatever. And I had the first aid kit in the truck. I've got one in it. A smaller one that I should carry it in my tackle bag, but I don't because of the space. But uh, anyway, that's something I picked up from my bushcraft buddies. And there's different tips that they that they've got that I've used along the line. Knife maintenance being one of them. So the compound is almost gone from this. Even though it looks like it is, it's still there. Just bits of micro bits of it. You can kind of see on here where the material, the dark stuff is, comes from the knife. The other thing, guys, is I've used this strop once or twice to, to sharpen hooks. I do have a, a little knife sharpening or a hook sharpening tool I keep in the tackle bag and I've had to use that quite a bit. We forget about that guys. If you if you got a favorite jig or a spinner or just hooks, treble hooks for like catfish or whatever, sharpen them. I try to do that about every other outing, especially the ones that I know I'm going to use again. I'll even do that each time I go out. Especially with some of the MEPS I use and some of these jigs. Just a little bit more on this tip right here. Oops, got the camera there. One thing I like about Mora is that, or uh, Muela, is it, it, you're starting to be able to get their products internationally now, which is good. So if you're into, if you never really got into collecting knives, big heavy handle on this, so smooth. I think this is their Coca Bolo. It's like an, I don't want to say an imitation, but it's like a synthetic wood. It's not really a plastic, but it's got good heavy. There you can see what that sticker was on there. But if you've never got one of these bushcraft knives, pick them up. The Pathfinder Knife School is a great place to start because they have the Scorpion, they've got the Buffalo Skinner, all different kinds of them. And that's how I got into it. I started first with the that Kephart. And then I already had this Swiss Army Knife. And then this one I added a little bit later. I like having that one. That one, this one works well on the tackle bag. And I've got, I need to put it back in there. I've got some other one, different one in the tackle bag, a little flip blade. And it works pretty well. But I'm a full big time and lover anything that. Victorinox, they're just such great blades. The Swiss Army, not, Army Knife crew. No, I'm not sponsored by anybody like that, but I just really like their products. But the ones I don't have, oddly enough, are the Moras. Moras, I think, are Sweden. And man, those are the gold standard for a lot of... Uh, they've got carving knives, but... In, for me, my opinion, I think they're neck and neck with Victorinox. A lot of people are like, oh, the Victor the Swiss Army knife, they don't have the, the other types of blades. I think now Victorinox has an adventure that's pretty good. But for sure, the Moras have been out for quite a while. A couple knives from Finland I'm curious about. 
collecting, so... And the question is, like, my mom was like, what are you doing with all these knives? Or do you have too many of them? Really, I don't have that many. And the thing is, I just take them to... When I go fishing, for the most part. And when I'm camping. Oops. I think this... I did a video this summer where I was using the Victorinox Ranger Grip to clean some trout, and it was just easy using that. Alright, so that's pretty much it. That's how I sharpen mine. You know, if there's, there's different ways to do it, just do your research. But if you're not into knife collecting, Oh man, go for it. The other thing is these are great heirlooms that you can pass down from generation to generation. <clears throat> so it's something that, you know, you and your kiddo would get into, go for it. But definitely check out these Muelas from Toledo, Spain. You'll know it they're authentic because it'll have the Toledo stamp on there, or Toledo is how we would say it here. Look at that. Absolutely phenomenal. So I may do some more knife reviews. The one thing about knife reviews is I don't like to use the knife just for the sake of a review, like carving wood, making feather sticks. Oh yeah, nice and sharp. What do you guys think? Should I make a, a lanyard for this one? It's got the spot for it. Got them for the other ones. Like I was saying, when I'm in the field and I need a quick sharpening, I'll use this. But other than that, the strop. All right, so what's coming up? Another video coming up here, guys, is I've got. Ooh, I need to do a little bit more on this guy. Got a little bit of compound on there is I've got a bunch of fishing orders that are coming in. They're on their way because I'm going up to uh, Iowa for fall break next week. Well, not yeah, not this coming week, but the next week. So I'm excited about doing that. I haven't been up to the to that farm area where the, the family farm is in October, and I don't think ever in my life. November for the holidays, for Thanksgiving, and I've gone to a couple of Iowa football games in in October, but that was down in Iowa City, and I never made it up to where the lake cabin is. But I need to do that because, I mean, I want to do that because I want to get in some fall fishing. Right now is the time when the pike and walleye and smallmouth are really starting to to feed to get ready for winter because once they're locked in the ice, you know, it's it's tough to find the anything that isn't stuck down there like minnows so if they're feeding on and I don't even think the helger mites are going to be down there the the crawdads all that stuff takes cover in the in the winter so now this is the big feeding frenzy so I think I got a pack right here from Venom these tubes the four inch This summer, the black tubes were the ones that got used the most, and I've never had that before. I mean, I was catching all kinds of stuff on there. That big 15-inch smallmouth, and then that monster carp that I've got in that video that my dad and my nephew had to go all the way around down to get the thing netted for me. I caught him up above the spillway and there was no water going over the spillway, so I couldn't finagle him to come over the flow of water so we could net him down below. And it, he it's just too big of a fish, and I caught him on that black tube. Caught a nice pike on the black tube also. So I'm relatively new. Now I'm seasoned, but in terms of years, I really only started using the tubes the last couple of years and I was like how did I not know about how 
awesome these are. Yeah, you can see the material coming off from there. Oh yeah, if the blade catches, see I made a little mark right there, then you know it's nice and sharp. And that's one way you can t tell if you know where the grind is to find the edge is if you go along and you and, and you dig into the strop a little bit. Anyway, so what I was saying is I got some orders coming in. Then there's a company that's here near me, Excite Baits, and I'm trying out a new lure that they've come out with. It's really good for smallmouth. So I'm going to be testing that out. I only have a week up there on fall break, so I can't really... I mean, I want to be able to catch some fish, so I'm going to, I can't do a lot of lure testing, but I am going to test a few. And then, of course, the Ned Ringer, i got to continue testing on that. And then I've used this kind of a craw before called the Yum Craw. It's like 3.5 inches. I've used it before, but I need to use that again, test it out, do some more testing on it. When I was part of the Mystery Tackle Box, I got some of those Yum Craws in there, and I was like, yes, these things are incredible. But I haven't used them since. So what happens is, is we get the lures that we really like, and we get used to using them. So that's what happens to me, and I don't want to say I'm a traditionalist, but man, I love using the MEPS, hair jigs, for sure. I'm going to start making my own hair jigs. That's the other thing I got coming up this winter, is I need to learn how to make my own hair jigs. Dirty by design. That's one of the little hashtag, one of the little taglines for these when they make them. Look at that high carbon steel. I think this is 1095. Anyway, so I want to learn how to make a hair jigs. So I can do crappie and for the walleye and for bass. I like using hair jigs. I don't use them enough. Meps make some, but. I've had decent success with them, but I want to try to make my own. All right, this guy looks like he's in good shape. One more pass on the... I'm a little bit bush lower mini condor. Now they make a full size of this. This would be great also for like a boot knife. I'm thinking about getting a nice little boot knife. Thing is, I don't really wear cowboy boots that much. Sometimes I'll do, but especially when I'm fishing, I don't. I've got my muck boots on or tennis shoes. But I've been watching some videos on how these guys are making these hair crappie jigs. So it seems kind of interesting, and uh, I think a lot of times these lures are designed to catch people, <laughs> to buy them and things like that, really, instead of catching fish, but I got a pretty much a good idea of the the colors up in Iowa that because of that dirty water. So I'm going to give that a try. You guys can give me some tips on, on line tying, I mean on jig tying. Alright guys, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, the gear video, I should be making that. Probably make it tomorrow. i got some stuff coming in the mail. The new orders or stuff that I put in. So we'll get into that. Let me see, I think i got another pack here of... Uh, these are the craw colored ones. Same thing from Venom 4 inch. That they're durable. And I've got the little inserts. The hooks and the little jig insert that goes in there and it's got their that grab attractant so I've tried different companies and I really like uh, Venoms and they got different sizes but I, I prefer the 4 inch because you know how bass will always hit anything big 
and I like the 4 inch because it also attracts the pike when I'm fishing up north. Now one thing I want to try to do is while I'm here in Texas is try to get a gar to hit a tube. I've never had that happen so that's something I'm looking forward to. Alright that one's got a nice edge on there. Alright guys I think I'm all set with the knives. So if it's it's kind of a fun thing to get into collecting the knives. So if you're new to it, the ones you like, go for it. You know, you see something you like, pick it up. And uh, these, I carry them on my belt. You know, when I'm out there fishing. This one, it's a little lanyard for the neck knife. I do sometimes get concerned with this because I don't want to choke or hang myself with it. <laughs> like if I get caught in a tree branch or something, but uh, the thing is this, the knife will cut that leather instantly if I need to get out of a situation like that. Alright, hey thanks for hanging out with me today when I was making the, this video. Hopefully you kind of saw something that you can learn from. I know of, it, you know, I enjoy doing this. It's relaxing. I got some of the football games on today. It's Sunday and I just have a chance to sharpen those. The question is which one am I going to take to Iowa for fall break? All of them? For sure the neck knife. And the one thing is that people were worried about is the condensation from sweating. And uh, I use a blade oil that I've got and I've got some videos on that. But I've never had any issues with the condensation. If it gets wet Honestly, I don't mind. I don't mind the, the patina or whatever because I'm using it. You know, these aren't for showcase type items. You know, so they're, they're going to get used. All right. Until next time, I will see you then. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for supporting the channel. I usually make fishing videos, but I'll make these from time to time. And uh, I'm just here at the the old card table working on this. Alright guys, till next time I'll see you then. Bye bye.